It's oh, Ebro in the morning. Uh, Warren G's phone is going off. Laura Styles is here. <laughs> Give it up for the legend. Yay. OG Warren G. He's Regulators. Hurt. He had a show last night at Highline. Uh, he's drunk still? Yeah. <laughs> Faded. What's Warren G drink? Uh... I had a last night. I had a mixture. I had a Patron. I had oh, Don Julio. See, I had oh, beer. He's tequila. Yeah, you was on your tequila and yeah. brew lab. That's my thing now. I'm on tequila heavy. I drink that Avion, okay. and then I, you know, I warm up with a brew. Yeah, that's always my thing. I start with a brew, and then I have my, you know, tequila on the rocks, and that just kind of sip on that. Maybe drink a bottle of water and then start again. Yeah, you know what I mean through the night. Um, um so Warren G's back with a new project. What's the name? Man, it's regulate the G Funk Air Part Two, the EP. Uh huh. Yeah, it's just it's just an EP. Um, just touching on, just getting people. You know, the fans always hit me like, Warren, when you gonna bring that G Funk back?" Da 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 da. And I'm like, "All right, here we go." Now you know the G Funk, mm -hmm. um, G Funk is obviously based in Parliament, but it was the Gangsta Funk, right? Mm -hmm. like Gangsta Funk. Yeah, yeah, but it was a lot of, a lot of samples from Ohio players, Parliament, mm -hmm. Funkadelic, George yeah. Clinton, that whole. Thing yeah. was the the styling of what G Funk is about. So for the young people listening now that don't know all of right. the the references going back, mm -hmm. um, can you talk about uh part you know because on the West Coast that heavy bass line Bootsy Collins you know those rolling bass lines you hear in a lot mm -hmm. of the music. Talk about that influence uh, on on just that scene on the West Coast. Man, I mean, that's that's what we was raised to, man, and, and you know our parents. You know they they pretty much instilled that in us. So, uh, man, the, the whole West Coast that's just how we was raised. It was it was you know was a, a low rider a low rider mm -hmm. type lifestyle, and that's yeah. that's what was being played. You know as we was growing up, so it it was instilled in us, and it lingered all the way out into our music. Well, I think too it should be noted that you know. Um, you know, disco music and house music was like the pop. That was like pop music. Mm -hmm. While James, you know, coming out of the 60s, James Brown going into the funk era of the Parliament, George Clinton, that was like street music. That was the hood yeah. club music. That was, yeah. you know, talking about what was going on socially as well as partying, mm -hmm. as well as creating like, you know, uh, a house party scene, you know, playing mm -hmm. Knee Deep and, and those records was... Yeah, those was the knee records. Deep, flashlight, knee, knee deep. Set it off. Flashlight, yeah. knee deep. So I think yeah, that that, that also should be noted too. That it was yeah. just kind of those funk was, yeah, we you know, street music for black yeah. people in the seventies. Yeah, straight up. That's now, the, now the first single off the project is called My House, and it, and it features Nate Dog. Yeah. Yeah. How many other? You, you, he must be sitting on so many sure Nate Dog gems. Yeah. How many times did you feature him on this project? Well, he, he threw out the whole um, EP, and the reason why I, I wanted him, I wanted to, to make it seem, you know, like, I didn't want to get on there, like, just mourning, like, you right. know, like. You, you know, wanted to keep him alive, yeah. Celebrate, yeah, celebrate him or not. Him. Yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, keep his legacy alive. And, uh, you know, I put him on the project and just, you know, made sure it wasn't too much, like, sad type of right, stuff. Right, right, so, right, you know, right. I wanted to be, be more on some feel good so i put him on there and we you know did it all the way through because it's kind of hard um you know working these days you know when and because a lot of artists don't understand when i'm doing music they don't understand what to do you know he knew exactly what to do you know and it's hard to find that artist or somebody who understand understand like he did when you say that, you say understand what to do. Um, can you be more specific? So you create a beat, okay? You mm -hmm. create a song. You create a structure for a song. Yeah. You're telling me that when you go and ask uh, uh, a new rapper or a new singer, you they don't know how to come into the studio and, and, and record? Is that what you're now, saying? Uh, it's just, no, not record. Just uh, It was a certain chemistry we had, just to, like how to... You know, he he would feel the music like whatever whatever type of music I did, he would he would uh, write write it like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot of uh, artists they don't be knowing what to do. Like, oh, how should I rap? The pattern to you? They the they like the beat, but they yeah. don't know. I'm like, you got to it's a, it's a, it's a, a certain feeling, and he just knew exactly what to do. We talk, and you know, and we would talk about different things, but he knew exactly what to do after we talked over it, you know mm. what I'm saying, and, and 
that's where he was. That's why he was so great with you know with the hooks and stuff like that. Does, I mean, um, he would take anything. Yeah, no warning. Turn it. He'd I mean, take this Pellegrino and turn it into a <laughs> hook. Nate Nate Dog, um, you know, was that artist that um, not only would know what to do in the studio, but would also know how to talk to other artists and make them better as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that Nate Dogg's just his gift of not only writing, melody, but also he was a comrade. Like, he would yeah. put his arm around people and, like, yeah. made sure everyone was yeah. feeling right yeah. at all times. Yeah. So, yes, he's definitely missing the game. Um, Warren G., um, you put out a project, um, and it's available right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's on iTunes right yeah. now. Yeah. Is it a coincidence or is it a part of the plan that you put out a project same time as your family member <laughs> Dr. Drake put out a project? I didn't even know he was dropping like that. It just, he dropped it just out of the blue, just boop. Oh, so you're surprised too. You're like, wait a second, I'm putting mine out too and he just dropped it out of nowhere? Yeah. He well, Dre announced it. what? Three, four weeks ago he was putting out a project. No, nah, it, 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 I didn't hear it. I think it was three weeks ago. It was like days for me. Really? Oh, so you guys, don't, you guys don't talk every day. That's... Not every day, but we talk. Yeah. How long? But you've been working on your project. What the last few months? Uh, it, it's been yeah. I mean, what up? Yeah, yeah. I say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A few months. Um, I did not know, but um, I was talking to him too because I wanted to, you know, be a part of uh, production with with um, you know, the record that he's working on right now. But I kept bouncing in and out, so I missed it. Oh, right on Compton. I was on pissed. Compton. Yeah. Have you listened to it yet? You ain't even had time. Yeah. Oh, no, I look, yeah. I, I I heard a lot of the music before. You know, Got it. a mm -hmm. lot of it, because he let me hear it just so I I'd know where to go. You know what? what you know, when you was trying to contribute. Yeah. 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 And uh, I kept having to bounce in and out of town. You know, I I, I still got to get out there and work. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I was out. I was out. So. You know, being out there so much, I, I missed the, the deadline. Have you seen yeah. the movie? Well, he grabbed me and I uh, was like, "Come, come watch this! Come watch this!" So I was like, "All right." So we went and we went and watched it. Um, I got about maybe almost halfway through, and then we both was like, "Man," I said, "Man, I'm gonna be passed out on this couch in a minute, man." <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, from watching, you know, the stuff I seen, it, it was incredible. And just to be a part of it growing up in it, I was the little kid, be, you know, behind just the little bitty kid watching everything, you know, like the the wet and wild pool parties, the, you know, for the, the police uh, harassments, down, all, that, all, all of that. I was right there. I was the little kid around, and I was in the studio actually on uh, uh I I don't know if I could say yeah, it. Yeah, you can say it. Niggas ahead. for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that was me that did the the one nine hundred to Compton skit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was a part of it, man. And and you know what they talk about, I I seen it and I was witnessing. And I was a part of it. So it's it's a trip to see it uh, turn into a movie. You know, it's like wow. You know that let me know like damn. You know, you guys really put it down, man. It's, it's but when you living in it, you didn't really realize the impact at, at the time. Mm -mm. No, nah, was just we was just doing music, just and just speaking, you know, just speaking how we wanted, you know, doing music how we wanted to do, and didn't care about what you know the the mainstream thought. We was just getting the point across. Period. Did um when uh the nineteen ninety one the chronic comes out. Mm -hmm. Right, and I'm sure that album you'll probably start working on the album in 1990, yeah, because I think yeah. uh, ain't nothing but a G thing dropped in uh, 90, late 90, and then the album came out in 91. If I got the dates right, mm -hmm. um, and then that just opened up the whole G funk era, right? Like it was boom. Um, how much did Warren when it was your opportunity and you yeah. got to put out your album and you signed the Twins and you had, mm -hmm. you know, um, other groups that you signed? Mm -hmm. um, was that I mean, obviously it was great for you because yeah. you know you was making music and you was making money and your yeah. hits on the radio was yeah. great. Um, but approaching ninety six, ninety seven, things mm -hmm. started to slow down. Right, right. Um, how what was that time period like as things started to st slow down for Warren? Because we haven't heard from you in how long? When's the last time you put out a project? Well, I dropped an ind uh, independent project called the G Files. That was like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Right. Um, but it had been some time even yeah. before that. Yeah, yeah. Before that it was ninety four. <clears throat> no. 
Um, yeah, it might be ninety four, ninety five. Uh, well, I actually, I dropped the record uh, right at that around that actually uh, ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won it all. Yeah, I dropped that album. But you know, in, from all of that right there, um, you know, that's when all that merge stuff started. You oh, know? with the labels. And I didn't understand it. Yeah, I didn't understand it. So, you know, I was talking to Leor and them like, man, what's what's going on with da 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 da. And uh, they were saying, well, this is happening, this is happening. I said, well, where am I going to be in all of this? You know, and it was like, okay, you're going to have to do this and wait this long and this, that before you come out. And I was like, man, I'm ready. I, I'm ready to do what I need to do now. And uh, so I asked them to let me go. Mm-hmm. You, know, I, you know, I was asking to let me go. And, uh, you know, after so long, it happened. You know? I, I think for the audience listening and watching too, yeah. um, 1995, 1996, 97, both radio and the record labels uh, all merged. Uh, radio stations merged, so you had companies that could own, instead of owning like one or two FM stations in right. a market, could own up to five, mm-hmm. right? In the same market. In the same market, mm-hmm. and then could own hundreds nationally. Um, a few years after that, the record labels got bought up by you know Universal, mm-hmm. got bought by Seagrams, mm-hmm. um, and these big corporations because they took the record business and it became public now. Yeah. Um, so you know Def Jam got bought up, Interscope, a lot of these labels got bought up, and so if you were to do research, you would notice a line you could probably um, draw between what went on um, and the lack of like black music departments and A and R departments and things and the way that hip hop and black music got developed and those amazing records that we had in the 90s and then go okay well what happened how come that didn't happen in 2000 how come that's not happening now and a lot of it has to do with these companies went public and so the budgets got cut because the shareholders wanted to spend less money and make it more profitable et cetera, et cetera. And, and all the way until now we're just and then you had the internet downloading thing which was yeah. you know the file sharing thing which is early, late 90s early 2000s which then sales got hurt even worse yeah and we're just now in 2015 getting to a point where, you know, people can sell merch. I'm sure Warren's right. touring, doing your shows, making your money, selling yeah. your T-shirts, putting the album out independently, right. being able to make money independently, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So it's been a long road for artists. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Um, I like, I mean, the the way it's going now, the, the industry is now, I, I like it. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It's easier. Yeah. You know, back then it it was it was you really had to be talented, man. Now it's it's you know it, it's a little easier, but you still got to be talented. But it's all you could right now. All you got now is just pushing a button, boop, and you could get your music to every everybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's uh it's 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 cool. Uh, and then you you got the you know like the the piracy and stuff like that. They got to just figure out some type of technology to where that people can't just download the music and no steal more. it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, know. there's a whole generation of people, and I see it on social media. They're like, "Look, I'm broke. I can't. I want music. Yeah. I can't afford to buy music. I'm broke. Yeah. I pay for the phone bill. A dollar. I pay for the bandwidth. <laughs> nah, but I'm serious. People go, look, I I pay for the streaming. Yeah, I pay for the phone, mm-hmm. and I should get be able to get my music." Yeah. I'm gonna buy the ticket to the show. I might buy a T-shirt, but I shouldn't. Like there are people who literally their entire life have never paid for yes. music. Yeah. Before. Yes, I was talking to some kids the other Crazy. day. They were like, "No," I was like, "You never put your credit card in and bought?" No, they're like, "No, we get it off of YouTube. We get it offline. There's plenty wow. of sites we can get everything for free." These are kids, right? And until that, that's yeah. gonna be the thing, right? Until. You know, the companies that own the bandwidth yeah. say, listen, we see you stealing records mm-hmm. that you don't own and they shut that off or, yeah. you know, they start because that's going to happen over the next few years. Yeah. I People yeah. watching this, yeah. mark my words, they yeah. are going the 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 what is it? The um, sound clouds that, you know, when people throw songs up and they get yeah. yanked down and right. this goes up and gets yanked down and they're going to continue to police it and police it. It's going to become a thing. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a trip, you know. But, you know, you just got to adjust, you know, and that's what I did. I adjusted to, you know, the new music business and, you know, just out there, you know, working, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That in, in that hiatus, I've, you know, I've, I've still been working, producing, um, 
you know, doing shows constantly and also raising my kids at the same time. You know, Warren G has how many kids? I, I got six. Six kids. Yep. So you got work to do. Wow. Yeah, four boys and two girls. Oh, you, you got a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah. How old is oh, your yeah. youngest? The youngest is three months. Oh, she's a oh, baby. She's brand new. Yeah, that's a boy. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, He's a baby. Yeah, royal. Yeah, Royal Griffin. Yeah, but it, it's a trip, man. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's you know, one of the reasons why I haven't been just out there, out there, out there. Just... Being being a part of their lives, you know, because you you know you you can't miss that those little errors with them. You gotta you gotta guide them. You know what I'm saying? So I want to get them. You know, like I got an 18 year old. I get him to you know get him to a certain point. Then okay, I know he he get it and he understand. Got fly carry solo himself. now. Yeah, yeah. You handle your business. You know. It's and, uh, so, yo, it's so amazing. So, you know, you got Snoop's son, right? Snoop's mm -hmm. son playing at UCLA. You got yeah. Diddy's son, yeah. right? Like, you see these kids. Like, we know Biggie's children, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. talked to his daughter, and then we made his son come up here. And you just see, like, it's just, I don't know. I'm 40, so. Yeah. I, I got one. He, 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 I, I just thought, like, my son, I, you know, I don't put it out there, but he. Yeah. Animal. Really? Sophomore, <laughs> both ways. Really? Yeah, he vicious. I and mean, he's playing football or basketball? Football. football. Seriously, I, I ain't going to even. You don't want to put his name. Well, because that's a whole other pressure, too, right? When people yeah. start knowing that your dad is yep. this or that, is, it puts a lot of pressure on them, yeah. right? But, you know, kids are all about social media. Does he yeah. ask you not to or do you guys do you guys have that no. conversation? Like, I told I, him, to create your own lane. Right, you know, right. Don't warn you, son. I don't want to hear none of that. Create your own lane. So he out there doing his own thing. And he's good he, with he it. He actually. Like on some of his little Instagrams, he get more Instagrams than me. I'm like, I mean, more <laughs> likes than me. I'm like, wait a minute, hold up, that ain't some. Wait a minute, he only sixteen. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> what are you doing? Did Warren G um, make enough money in the '90s to really sustain? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you go work, you do shows now, but yeah. do you still see checks from that '90s stuff? Yes, nice ones. Still. So, and now let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Sampling is much different now. Right. Right. When you sampled um uh, Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald. Mm -hmm. Um, when you sampled that, if that was to happen today, the, they would probably take a hundred percent of the song. Yeah. They yeah. would that wouldn't you wouldn't see any money from that probably. Most likely not, yeah. But then it was you had to get it cleared, but the, the mm -hmm. rates were different. Yeah. So you're still able to see checks from regulators because that's Definitely. always Yeah, it's me. Uh, I keep forget. It, yeah, that's what oh, the right It's me, uh, Nate, uh, the Doobie Brothers, and Michael Michael McDonald. We all split. Mm -hmm. You know the whole. Even though we put it, me and Nate put in all the work, we still use their music. That's so right. They got it. They entitled to that. But we, they but you, getting half, and me and Nate getting half. Yeah, it but and also Nate Nate's writing was completely different. He didn't use Michael's melody. Right. He didn't use. He right. went and did his own thing over the top of it. You you mentioned right. something about um sampling and them getting if it would happen today they would get a hundred percent of the song yes. so how does that benefit the artist that's doing using the sample if it doesn't you just put well, out just to put out sampling's yeah. different now if you were to use a sample now and it was the, it literally they used the entire track yeah. pretty right. much right it was a yeah. loop of the entire uh -huh. beginning of the song yeah um they didn't change anything adding it was just the track and he rhymed and nate wrote a hook if you was to do that now, they could take 100% of your song. Yeah. So all the money coming in, they would take that. And a lot of people, and there's a whole other discussion, ask why hip-hop isn't the same way it was in the 90s. Mm. Yeah. Well, if you a lot of our favorite records was straight samples. Yeah, straight up. Straight loops yeah. of other records that you can't, if you want to make any money now making music, you can't do that anymore. You, you basically got to, you know, if, if it's a dope sample, take it. Blow it up, get them, get them, you know, they hundred percent, and just from the from how how big it gets, is it it benefits you by going out and doing them shows and performing. Right? It brings in, yeah. yeah, so that's how you get yours now, right? You know, so you go out perform it, boom, and you make your cheese out there on the road. You and know, that's the game. Mm hmm. And the, like and that merch. Yeah, and that merch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So Warren G. Pick up his new project. It's on iTunes. Um. I was man. Listen. There's so much we could talk about. Oh yeah. You know, with you and Dr. Dre touring, yeah. and you know, just that that '90s scene. Um. You know, I, I would I would love to hear from you. You know, um, when you were you were the you're six years younger than Dr. Dre. Yeah. Right. So you came on. You were, were you rapping first or were you producing first? 
I was doing both, man. Um, actually, so were you? How did they see you? How did the? How did Dre, Cube, mm -hmm. and everybody see Warren G? Just as the little kid over here. How did they? And DJing. Well, um, I was in the hood doing my thing, so that, you know they they. I mean they knew, but they didn't know that it. it you know, it's like uh, you know I, t I took it. T I, you know I took him a couple demos like. Listen to this, Andre. Oh, psh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we we had to build ourselves. Um, you know, we had to build ourselves and then present it to him. But but in the, in the meantime, we was selling candy, working and just you know doing we had to doing what we had to do. But when kids. when did he finally take you serious? Like, okay, he's about something. Just being super yeah. persistent. Um, he had a bachelor party for one of his buddies named L.A. Dre. And uh, I came, I hadn't seen him in a while, so I came up and uh, we was in there chilling and having a good time and they was they didn't have more music to play. So I told my homeboy, I said, Rod, go grab the tape. So when he went and grabbed the tape, I took it, popped it in, and L.A. Dre was like, dang, that's banging, who was that? And L.A. Dre used to produce also. Yeah. Yeah. Keyboard player, yeah. yeah. And uh, so he was like, who was this? I was like, that's me, my homeboy Snoop, and my homeboy Nate. It was like, did your brother hear this? I was like, nah, I didn't. You know, I didn't even play it for him. So he was like, hold on, you need to let him hear this. So he came and he heard it, and he was like, man, he was like, that's y'all. I said, Shh, I've been trying to tell you, man. <laughs> and, uh, what, what year was this? That was probably like, uh, probably like. 80, well, about like 90. Early 90, right? At, at end of 89, early 90. And uh, wow. he was like, come to the studio on Monday. We went up there on Monday. My homeboy drove us up there. You know how when you get to the light and you got to put it in park, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. keep going, he drove us up there. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, the bad transmission. All the way, the streets. We <laughs> Yeah, we took the street all the way to Hollywood. And uh, we got in there, Snoop, we met everybody, you know, with Snoop met Dre and everybody, and they did a song right then and there called Gangsta's Life. It was off the of, off a of hold on with a involved, mm -hmm. and uh, from that point on, Dre took us under his wing. He said, "Y'all come move with me, live with me," and that's when it all just started. And that then we got deep cover after that. Yeah. Then we got deep cover. We mm -hmm. got nothing but a G thing. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Young Snoop was something, right? Man, he was off the chain. Yeah, him corrupt. All of them, you know. Corrupt is him and him and Corrupt had a cold battle. It was serious. Really, they would I go bar for bar, bar for bar at each other. Like Snoop, was, you know, he was Snoop was incredible because I'll point at something and then Snoop would just start rapping about it. He'd break it down. So it was it was weird or different to us to meet a guy who was doing the same. He'd do the same thing. He was like, boom, you got a ring on your finger, I got one. He said, I got a ring, I remember what he said. He said, you got a ring on your finger, and that is true, but if you look at mine, I got one too. Yeah. It was hard, they was going at it, so I was like, ooh, wait. So it wasn't no, all right, he won, he won, but. But they just made each other better. Yeah, and I told Krupp, I said, look, give me your number. I took his number, went up to the pad, did a demo on him, let Drayton him here, boom, they signed him, straight up. And then that's when, and then Daz yeah. came in with his yeah. beats and production yeah. and rhyme. And, and I, I showed Daz, I taught Daz how to produce, like how Dre taught me, I taught Daz. So you, Dre taught you what specifically? The machines? The, the machine first. And you know. what what was your first drum machine y'all was on? Uh, MPC 60. MPC 60. Yeah, I still got it too. You haven't moved same. to the 3000 and you ain't get to the 2000. Oh, I done stepped my game up. I'm oh, on the okay. Renaissance. Oh, <laughs> the Renaissance with the computer and yeah. the whole thing, the little board. Yeah, yeah, ain't nothing like dragging and dropping. Yeah. Right onto the pads. I'm like, oh, this is incredible. Yeah, but it, it uh, you know, he showed me how to work the drum machine. And then, um, you know, from there, I just started watching how he was doing. He even taught me how to splice tape. Mm. You know, when you cutting the yeah, tape. Yeah, with the oil pen yeah, and the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, now I can't I can't remember none of that, but uh, splicing tape is it's just like cutting a beat on a yeah, screen. Editing. You just listen to the thing and <laughs> that's it. You just grab the, yeah. grab the kick drum, start with yeah. the down, and get it yeah. right cut right there. Yeah. You just got to cut on a diagonal so you get the right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's too choppy. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it he taught me a lot, man. And uh, I just took it from there, man. I just I was the guy who would go and dig 
and, and bring the records back. Mm. I would go. So you was looking for the breaks. You was looking for the drums. You was yeah. Like let me ride. That was a. Uh, I had bought that. I bought that record in in a. The the, the uh, in Torrance. It was a a break record, and it had already the uh, the one little part to. Uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, 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 that was in there, and that. Mm, mm, at, 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 mm, at, that was in there too. Uh, uh, uh. Dre took that shit. He was. I was like, listen to this, Andre. He heard it. He was like, that's dope. He took it and he did his magic to it. And I was like, eh, damn. Be able yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. You know, it, it was like that with you know with a lot of the records, like um, like the doom doom boom. Mm, that's a little a little sample that's right. Uh, I forgot. To, I think the group was called the Temperies or something like that. I'm not sure, but it was the same record that uh, at the Cube used it. Da, da, make the world. Oh cool. yeah, that's on. Yeah. It's on that same record. It's a little that's a, bitty. That the, that's a stylistics, ain't it? I'm not sure, but it's a People little bitty. Make the world go round. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a little bitty, little bitty, little area. Three seconds. Yeah, that that people didn't know that it's. All the way at the end. Now, did you notice? Did you notice on the Compton album? Mm -hmm. And this hasn't happened in a while. I mean, here and there, a couple of people have done. Kanye left some gems for people on um, the Yeezus album. Like, Mm -hmm. if you want to go in and grab, like, if you're a producer, you want to go grab some sounds that's there for you. Um, Watch the Throne had some breaks in it that Kanye was kind of just because you know how a producer will just kind of cover yeah. all the marks to make sure yeah. you can't sample from them. Dre left some hi hats and some different kick drums and yeah. some openings in yeah. the Compton album. Yeah, that if you really are paying attention, that was a way of an OG producer being like, "Yo, y'all not really out here doing it right. I'm gonna leave <laughs> you some." Little things that you can yeah. grab that you know these computer systems can't give you this certain texture that yeah. having a drummer, yeah. right, or having your own bass because yeah. you know when you coming up as a producer you can't hire musicians to come in have a session and then chop from that when you yeah. get money that's something you could do when you get money yeah but as on the Compton album if you're paying attention he left there's at least there's some definite he left hi hats ringing at the end of something yeah. for a second so you could just grab your own hi hats yeah. and make your hi hat sound real instead of sounding like just out of a computer right, right you know what I mean like he did that and that's something that hasn't happened yeah and, and you know producers don't always do that yeah I, I mean he he's so dope he he could take any percussion sound anything and change the make it sound ten times better than what it is. And uh, you know, I, I learned that, you know what I'm saying? But he it's something about what he do that's I'm I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, wait a minute, how did you make that? I'm I'm watching, but it it, it don't sound that it, it didn't sound like it did when you first started. He got his own plugins that he programmed, Man. that's what it is. Yeah. Cause those producers they'll go in and tweak their own plugins on the Pro Tools and EQ their yeah. things and they won't you know, yeah. Pro Tools gives you plugins. Yeah. Yeah. But it's what you do with what they give it to you that allows yeah. you to customize it and make your shit different. You know what I mean? It would be like, you know, you tuning your microphone as an artist or you tuning yeah. your 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 board or, you know, yeah. setting your EQs up a certain mm-hmm. way to make your yeah. your you know, your set on the turntable. You know how artists would get on stage and be like, Yo, my sound is fucked up. How come my sound <laughs> Well you didn't spend the time EQing your shit yeah. the same way the last dude spent the time EQing his yeah. shit so you wasn't ready for the show. Yeah. Right? And you got your own sound dude and all that. Would you, Warren G, behind the scenes with Dr. Mm-hmm. Dre, mm-hmm. um, you spoke on Let Me Ride, you spoke on, you know, turning your tape. How mi- how much other things would you as a young producer in the game, because this is, we're in an era right now where yeah. you got young people coming up that yeah. don't really understand the dues that they have to pay. Yeah. Right? You know, and I, and I talk about it a lot where you'll have like, you know, songwriters coming up and they wrote an idea for someone. You had the whole yeah. Drake Meek scenario right. where they're like, right. oh, reference tracks. You don't write his own raps, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. In your experience, you being in the room, mm-hmm. how much did Warren G contribute idea wise that Dre then took and turn into something else? And that was just part of you paying your dues. A, a lot of the damn near the whole chronic, you know, I contributed, but it, it was it was it was a collective a team effort, you right. know. But it, it the whole chronic album, you know, I, like I said, I was the guy who would go out and I would dig and get the records, and I'd come back to Andre like, look, listen to this, and he if it's dope, he'd take it, doctor it, it up, yeah, doctor it up. 
and st he's still analog, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. still analog, so that's another reason why a lot of stuff is so fat still. Right, you know what I'm saying? and for the audience. Yeah. What does that mean? Analog is like the, the, remember how your cell phone used to be an analog mm -hmm. phone and they switched to digital? Mm -hmm. And you know how like when it was analog on the old Star Tech, it was like the voice, you could hear the voice a little bit louder if you right. had a cell phone back in the day and the calls didn't drop out as much back in the day on the analog <laughs> phone, yeah. remember that? Now yeah. they upgraded it to digital and the, and, the, and the voice, like when you're on the phone, Anybody, and most people listening right now never even had an analog phone. Yeah. You know how a landline sounds like a, yes. a certain way, but yeah. then a cell phone sounds, and you can hear like the, the you can hear how the, the resonance in someone's voice over a landline versus on a cell phone, everything is kind of thin. Mm -hmm. Same thing in music. Yeah. Digital makes things less true to sound than analog. Mm -hmm. Analog is warmer. It's um, rounder and full. If that, yeah. Does that make sense? No, yeah, it does. Yeah. It makes mm. sense. So Dre is still to this day, even analog. though something he gets something digital, he'll still put it back to an analog process. Exactly. Yeah. Solid state logic. That SSL. Yeah, that SSL mm -hmm. board is something. Yeah. yeah. I got one coming as soon as I get home. I'm getting. I'm getting the uh, XL. Uh, the uh, XL desk. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I got. I had to do it. I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I gotta. I was like, I gotta get back into that. Right, more you know the analog, and uh, I'm, that's what I'm doing, man. I'm getting back into it, and it ain't gonna stop. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to, to produce and, and and do this stuff, man. Yeah, but like I said, man, it 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 was it was just a trip, just how how we all work together. You know, when you got me, Snoop, DLC, RBX, Daz, Corrupt. Man, I miss RBX, you know, man. He still dope, dope as he. He had that voice. Cold right now. You know he was a part of the Freestyle Fellowship. I know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just that, just the way we we gelled. It was it was Abstract incredible, rude, man. Mm -hmm. All them yeah, dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it was it was like all of that mixed, and you know with with gangster gangster. You, I want us gangster shit. That's yeah. what, <laughs> <laughs> it was gangster shit. Uh, MCs, it, 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 it was everything. Studio weirdos, musicians, everything. the whole all thing, mixed all in together. one room. Yeah, and yeah. that's Dre that brought the, you know knew how to create exactly. an environment for yeah. you know. Yeah, he would he would just it, it was incredible. I, I even uh like on stranded on death row, um, I was like, man, listen to this. It was that Isaac Hayes that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the yeah. beginning, yeah. I said, listen to this. He took that and. Put the uh, the uh, keep on moving drums up under it. Do mm -hmm. do that. Do, do. Mm -hmm. I was like, boom, boom, that's it. Oh my god! I was like, this dude is incredible. <laughs> but I w I was just happy to just be working with him, man. You know, and uh, he taught me a lot, man. And just I just took it and just you know start creating and doing my own thing because I didn't want to just be uh, uh, a DJ and you know I wanted to really contribute to whatever. You know he had going on because I always looked up to him all my life, just like and still. Yeah. You know, just look up to him. You know, even though we older, and uh, we we men, but I still look up to him like it's still like the big brother, little brother thing. I yeah. still him and my other brother Tyree, rest in peace. I just wanted to be like them. You know what I'm saying? And, and whatever you know, because I was the little kid, so I'm, you know, you watching. And you like, man, I wanna do that, I wanna do that, I wanna be just like my brothers, they da 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 da. So that's that stuck in my head and I just you know, and, and they showed me a lot, man. Yo man, As I appreciate you sharing today, yeah, man. Yeah. Really do. That's all good. Pick up that Warren G. What's the name one more time? Regulate the G Funk Air Part I 2 to E P. Yeah, man. Go pick oh, that man. up and man, anytime, man. Anytime you're in For New sure. York, come by, chopper. Sure. All right. For sure. Much love.